Good morning, everyone. I got a pretty big room. Has uh, everyone actually had their coffee, got, got some energy from the keynote, or skipped the keynote, or went to the stream? Yeah, not much energy yet? OK. <laughs> uh, I am Earl Miles. Uh, I bet. <laughs> oh. Uh, the thing about being at DrupalCon is I get to feel famous for a week. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess you all have heard of me. So I don't really need to introduce myself, but I did write the views module as well as panels and a whole bunch of modules that goes along with it. <laughs> all right. I got a room full of pro panels people. Awesome. Because <laughs> there's the, a sign in the, in the exhibitor's room and there's the stuff, stuff people say about Drupal. Uh, and there's this thing on there, always use panels and never use panels right next to each other. <laughs> and a little bit of controversy about panels. Some of it justified, some of it not. Uh, we try to address what we can. So I guess I don't need to go through this slide too much. I'm betting most of you know this, but I'll talk about it a little bit anyway. Uh, and I'm mostly, my slides aren't very long. I'm mostly going to do demos, but I am going to walk through a little bit about what I'm actually going to show you. Uh, so the panels suite of software, it panels, although what panels is really these days, uh, it started off as everything, but it is now just the layout manager. Uh, it does styles, it does the drag and drop stuff, and it creates a, a central way so that the panels system can be reused in other applications. Uh, and the first, the major application to use it has always been page manager once we split that out. Page Manager is a module that is, uh, it was d well described as a GUI for hook menu. Make sure that. Uh, which means you give it uh, URL paths and other information that hook menu normally has, like whether it has visible menu uh, and shows up in the menu structure and other things like that. And then you provide things that will render or display your content. Uh, given that. And the primary thing you can put there are panels, but it also can do a couple of things that aren't panels, like Eclipse GC, uh, Chris Vanderwater's uh, context admin module, uh, and there's also HTTP response codes. You can use it to do 301 redirects or 403 access denied straight up or just 404. You can pretend that the path doesn't exist, which sounds funny, but there are legitimate reasons to do that. Um, the other major module that has existed for a while in the panels universe is called Panels Everywhere. And it's a uh, replacement for block module entirely uh, and your page template. And it needs a lot of work and I'm hoping in the next year that I can redo the UI for Panels Everywhere to make it more friendly. Particularly since in Drupal 8, there's an initiative now to get a lot of this layout stuff uh, into Drupal core. Um, my actual hope is that the panels module will cease to exist, uh, but maybe some the rest of these will continue to exist so that core can do the layout stuff and contrib can help use that layout stuff in ways that core might not be able to do. Um, that would put the core functionality in core uh, and then I'll expand on that in all kinds of ways. The new stuff uh, that I've written in the last six months, I would say, uh, maybe a year panelizer, I can't remember when I actually published it. Um, and these have mostly been uh, funded by clients, so I've been paid to write this stuff, uh, and I should drop uh, iVillage's name out, um, because they have paid to have panelizer, fieldable panel panes, and all of this stuff except for Panoply at the end written. And they, they've needed this stuff because they have a very complicated site with a lot of content editors, and it was very important to them, and it became very important to me, that we could provide a good experience for their content people. So the first thing that they had me write was Panelizer, uh, which is its panel nodes on steroids, and I'll talk about that more in another slide, uh, but also the fieldable panel panes, uh, which are entities that can be used in panels directly, uh, kind of like the Bean module does for blocks, uh, and then these other things, uh, which I'll get to a little bit more. Um, and then Panoply, which is being funded by uh, Chapter 3 slash Pantheon. I think it's more Pantheon than Chapter 3, but the people cross over a lot. And uh, Matt Cheney has been working uh, overtime the last couple of months on uh, Open Academy, which is their distribution for education. 
And they realized pretty early that there were, if you just took out a few things, it actually became a pretty generic distribution. Uh, and I've been talking about having a distribution based on panels for years, but the technology hasn't been there, uh, the UI hasn't been there, and just, it, so it's never actually quite materialized. Uh, well, as of about a week ago, this has materialized in a beta form. It's not quite ready yet, but it is on Drupal.org, and you can install it. Uh, and it's also on Pantheon, and you can spin up a Pantheon site if you've got a dev key and look at it. Um, the, a lot more will be changing in it over the next few weeks, but it's there now that we can look at. The first new thing I want to talk about is, uh, and this actually is Pantheon slash chapter three, uh, did the bulk of the design work on this. We redesigned the IPE. And the IPE is the in-place editor. Um, mostly if you've been using panels, it has a back-end editor where you drag stuff around that those are little blocks that represent content but not are the content. The IPE is an editor where you're looking at the content and you click a button on the bottom and all of a sudden you can drag and drop it all. And I'll show you this when I get to the end of my slides. But it's a nice thing. The, the redesign makes this less ugly because when we first introduced it, we were wor more worried about the code path and making it function than we were on making it look nice. Once we got the functionality in, put some money into making it work, look nice, and now it's looking really good. And this is in the newest release that I did just this weekend, so very new stuff. Um, also as part of that, the IPE can now change the layout of the page, which it did not used to be able to do, and can change the style of the pane. I'll show you that a little bit later too. Um, one thing that iVillage needed for their uh, content people was pane locking. One of the most important problems they were running into is they had content people, but they needed to be able to control where their content was. They weren't editing the layout, although they might change it from one to another, but they needed to be able to say these ads can't move and these header elements have to stay in the header. So we added locking to panes and it's a pretty simple mechanism. If you have the lock permission, you can uh, lock the pane and say this can uh, stay either it can't be moved at all or it can only be moved in this set of regions and you can select which regions it is. Then to move it, it must be unlocked and only people with the unlock permission can do that. Um, it, it was a great thing for the content people because it allowed them to not worry about things that were outside of their purview because the site builder could then lock those panes into place. Um, the big thing that they funded and took the most amount of time, uh, and, and when I say most amount of time, I worked uh, 60, 70 hours a week for like three weeks to get this actually done on their schedule, was called Panelizer. And the simple description is that it's panel nodes on steroids um, and with context. Um, the more complicated description is um, we allow you to have a panel layout for any node and it will provide a default layout if you want or multiple default layouts and you can choose which one to use. Every aspect of the, uh, the system has permissions. So I can say uh, that only the executive people can even modify the layout, which means that these nodes will basically get the default layout and nothing else. Uh, or I can give them permission to only select one of the layouts and nothing else, or I can give them full permission to modify everything about the layout and the context uh, per node, and each node bundle gets its own set of permissions. So you can be very, very granular in how you let people uh, do this, or you can just blow out the permissions and let them do whatever you want, depending upon the needs of your content people and how, how much true separation you have. Um, also, as part of it, we made it kind of entity generic. So it comes with plugins to work on users or taxonomy terms and outside of the node, the plugins are actually really short. They're only maybe 50 or 100 lines of code. Some of that code is, part, is an export, so you don't have to write that. You just have to cr give them a good default uh, and you have to tell it how to save because there's no generic entity save function and a couple of other little things that aren't generic for entities. But anyone who gets into this will not take very long to write this for their entity if they need to. Um, that means that if you've got custom entities in your site or say product entities from commerce or other things, it isn't too hard to extend the system to non-node entities and then use that to panelize anything you want. 
Um, this is something that I think is most useful for things like commerce, where you tend to have very complicated displays as part of catalogs. Um, I think Panelizer is a revolution in the paradigm because it presents users, uh, the content people, with a much slimmed down interface. One of the biggest complaints about panels is you can't actually give it to your content people because they end up in the page manager UI, which is very, very complicated. Panelizer strips away all of that complication. Your content people will never have to see the word variant. And in fact, Panelizer covers some 80 or 90% of the use cases for variants at all, which means you might not use variants yourself, uh, even though they'll be used behind the scenes. And that just strips away a level of complication that many people are afraid of. Fieldable panel panes. Uh, who here ha knows about or has used or at least understands what the bean module is? Uh, okay, a few of you, so I gotta explain this. Um, Drupal 7 has entities and nodes and users and taxonomy terms and all that are entities. And one of the key things about an entity is that you can add fields to an entity. Uh, and one of the key things is that because we have massively improved file handling, although it still has a long way to go, as people in Dave Reed's session somewhere could tell you, um, it does mean we do have decent file handling, and one of the things you can't do right now is create a panel pane and put an image inside that pane. That's really hard because you have to store the image. This was created mostly for that. You can set up an entity with whatever fields you want, and then your content people can create that entity either from a custom UI or directly inside the panel. You can add content, select new panel, new fieldable pane, or I think it's panel pane or whatever it is, and then they'll enter their files or whatever you did it. You can add bundles to this. So like Panoply comes with eight or 10 uh, bundles so that there's media, uh, image, and I can't even remember what they all are, but some basic content bundles that your content people can go, oh yes, I need this media thing, and boop, boop, pop it up, and now you have a pane for it. You can say this is reusable, so it will show up in add content after that and you can say what category it will show up in or you can say it's not reusable and it will only be in that panel. So it's a pretty powerful little system and it, it also comes with um, the, uh, the selection criteria system on the panes. So when you create one of these panes, you can control who will be able to view that pane as well as who will be able to edit that pane. Um, the important thing there was uh, we had content people in different departments. You had the health department and the, uh, the news department or wh uh, whatever. I can't remember what the departments were. But they wanted to be able to create panes that were usable only for those departments. So they said, well, everyone has the uh, create fieldable pane role and everyone can edit them, but we're going to lock this down to just people in this department. So they create their pane, say only people in our department can edit it, and now it's their department's pane and no one else will be able to mess with it. Uh, and that's just using the simple selection criteria access rules that are everywhere else in panels and pretty easy to figure out. Uh, next was a really, really tiny module, but it turns out to be really, really nice if you're really using panels. Um, in panels, if you're looking at a node or an entity that has fields, there's a pane which just displays a single field. And you select the formatter and you control how it looks. Well, this adds a contextual link to that which will bring up in overlay module a page that edits just that field on that entity and offers you the ability to do handle revisions. Um, when you have complicated nodes, because when you're a media company, your nodes can have lots of little things, bylines and this kind of content and that kind of content, it's really convenient to be able to edit things isolated from each other so that you're not overwhelming your content people. That's what this does. They get to look at the content, say, I want to edit this little piece, boom, you got the thing. In the future, I want to be able to create bundles of this so you can put more than one field in one of these boxes and create little groups of fields that have panes, but that's a future thing. Right now it's one field, but still, that's really handy. And it's a tiny module, it's just called FAPE, uh, and the, uh, the back end of it, the page that edits the field, isn't tied to panels at all. So if you don't care about the panels aspect, you can still create your own interface to that edit form it handles proper access control and use that in your own system even without panels. So um, that's a nice little addition to Drupal that I think was sorely needed. This one isn't really panels, 
but it's being used heavily with panels, and I wanted to talk about it anyway, partly because iVillage um, supported, uh, uh, funded it. Um, they had a need to be able to create revisions and then say, well, I want to publish this at midnight um, so that it swaps over. And it's a common need in Drupal. And there's a module out there that actually, two or three modules out there that do it uh, in, in Drupal, like the workbench moderation module, and there's another revisioning module out there. And they all have problems, and this module has problems too. Um, I had to pick different problems to accept. Um, the problems they had um, were unacceptable for our purpose, and I wasn't able to repurpose them, so I ended up duplicating them. But it's, it's different because, uh, one, this is entity agnostic. Much like Panelizer, you can attach this to whatever entity you want. This was needed because they needed this for the fieldable panel panes, uh, and workbench moderation just simply would never have been able to do that. But more importantly, um, I took a different approach. Their approach was when the node is being uh, viewed, that was when they would swap out which one you actually see. I went to the other side. When you go to edit the node, I swap out which one you actually edit. So the published one is always the, the current revision, but the one that's being edited is another revision, and there's a bunch of really sneaky and underhanded and possibly not good code in the background to make sure that when you save that node, the right things happen. Because field API is kind of, you're not supposed to edit anything other than the current revision, so it, 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 it's really cheap and, and silly, but it works. And the nice thing about it is, you're editing that revision and it's completely invisible to the user. Uh, there's a, uh, Henrik Rusidavi did a little video on the Entity Revision Manager. Uh, it might be worth Googling for that if you're interested in this to kind of see what it does, because it's, the, the actual demo is really short. It's there's a little checkbox that says, do I want to publish this revision when I make it? Uh, and do I want to schedule that for a certain time? And it, the schedule works both on cron and on view. So it will actually check. So your scheduling happens uh, immediately as needed. Um, and to, it also can work on uh, uh, entities, which means for the commerce people, this could be expend extended to work on your products if you need to uh, revision your catalog and make massive changes that go out at a certain time. Um, so it's a neat little module. Uh, Henrique is also working on a patch. One thing it doesn't do is unpublish on schedule, but there's a patch in the queue that will do that, and I'm hoping that we're getting close to being able to commit that for the next version. Finally, the last slide, well, almost last slide, uh, is a distribution called Panoply. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with this a lot yet. I've tried to install it, uh, but I've been kind of busy leading up to DrupalCon, it happens. Uh, but I, I, I really want to get into this and make sure that this is something good. Uh, just last night, Matt added some uh, content, some uh, starter content, which was something that it was missing when I first installed it. So I got through this installation and then I was left with an empty Drupal site. And just like every other empty Drupal site, it's like, oh, what do I do now? So having some starter content to kind of lead you down the path to just you know see it when you're demoing it, uh, should be a big deal, but I haven't had a chance to install it and look at that content because he did it last night and I haven't had any free time since. Uh, but I, I would love for people to, to look at this and start providing some feedback uh, about things they would like to see. It's more than just panels. I mean, it comes with uh, a WYSIWYG and a bunch of, of, of fieldable panes that you can start off with and a bunch of node types and just a lot of stuff that they find themselves using over and over and over again when they're building sites um, that they think a lot of people will just really ramp up the getting started and make things easier. So I'm excited about this and I'm hoping that over the next few months this will grow into something a lot of people use. I what that was. Uh, and that's the end of my slides. So internet willing, I'm now going to start demoing some of this, although, uh, and hopefully you've all seen this link to get to the surveys, but uh, they're encouraging everyone to go fill out surveys at the end, so please do and tell them I did well. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, now my internet here has been a little weak, so I'm just going to hope that this works. Um, this is my uh, uh, dev site. Um, there's not much here to see immediately, and I need to go to, yes. You love those test nodes there where I was just, Sometimes I make up words, sometimes I'm just like, hit the keyboard. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 there we go. So I'm gonna show you first the new IPE. 
Uh, for those that are familiar with the IPE uh, in its previous incarnation, the first thing you'll notice here is the bottom bar is now full screen. Uh, and instead of having one button, it has two. Um, <laughs> I know. Believe it or not, I spent more time adding the second button than I did adding the functionality for that second button. <laughs> it, yeah, it needed a little recoding to support more buttons. But now I can add more buttons all, that I, all I want. So um, let's go ahead and change the layout. Uh, we've done a little bit of redesign on the layout changer. And yay, slow internet. There we go. Um, so we get to, uh, instead of having the radios, we'll just let us pick a new layout. And we'll pick uh, this one. And we'll see if that's actually the layout I was using. There's supposed to be a box around the current layout. Yeah, that's the one I was currently using. So luckily, we have a back button down here. I'll pick a different layout. And I'll pick this one. And now what I'm presented with, instead of formerly when you changed layouts, you were given a bunch of select widgets that said, for content that was in this region, where should I put it in the new layout? I decided to just show you the layout, and now there is a pane that represents the region uh, of the old layout. And if you're not sure what was in that region, you can open this up and see which panes were in there. Uh, and then, of course, drag them around. So the stuff that was on the top, I probably actually want in the middle. So we'll just drag that over here and then scroll down a little bit and save. And then in place, that stuff will all change. And now the stuff that was on the top that was going all the way across is no longer doing that. And now the redesign, this used to be really, really ugly uh, and I had done the best I could but I'm not a designer so I'm very happy that we have a real designer to make this look nice. And I think we still need a little work. Um, it, it hasn't been optimized, for example, for a small screen, and you can kind of see it here. But um, it, even with needing a little tweaks, uh, a little bit of tweaks here and there, I think it's a lot better. Um, I mean, you've got much more visible drags. Mm -hmm. This is much more obvious what it does. We've switched to icons here, and there's little hovers. So it's not immediately obvious what the icon does. Being able to change the style is a new feature. Um, deleting one is obviously not. Um, but you know, moving this stuff over here, that's pretty easy. Uh, maybe I don't want to do that, so I can go through that, but I actually do want to do that. And then wait. And then uh, uh, one of the other little tweaks that we did was uh, the throbber used to show up down on the button, and I made it in the middle of the page to kind of let you know that you shouldn't be clicking while it's doing its Ajax stuff. Uh, and now everything is in the middle because, I don't know, I was silly putting it there. Um, the other little thing that I'm not going to be able to show you very well because there's only one of me um, is that it, it used to totally break with locks, uh, but now the IPE properly locks. If I click this, at this point, this is now locked for changes. If another user who has the permission to use the IPE comes over and clicks that button, um, what they'll get is a little pop-up that says, this is, is now locked. Someone has unsaved changes. This lock has been in place for X time. Would you like to blow away their changes so you can change it or cancel and go back to the way you were? Um, blowing away is really nice if uh, someone, say, left their thing open for a week and didn't close it. Uh, but unlike other things like views, uh, views, if you just leave the page and come back, your unsaved changes are still there. IPE has no way to do that, so it's smart. If I just hit refresh, that actually sent an Ajax request when I hit that and it cleared my lock. So my unsaved changes are completely gone as soon as I refresh the page. But since there's no way to get back to that, that's probably okay, and I don't think most people are gonna care. Uh, and those are the changes on the IPE. Anyone have any questions about that before I move on to another little system? That one over there. Will the uh, UI improvements in the Will, oh, will, be, will the uh, improvements to the IPE be uh, moved back to the uh, back-end editor? Um, I don't know. It's not something I've thought about. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, many of those improvements are necessary for the back-end editor, partly because that back-end editor will be seen more by site builders, and a lot of those improvements will not necessarily be as much of an improvement there. 
because uh, this was meant to be seen with your content and on the back end editor you're not seeing the content you're seeing placeholders for the content um, we probably could do another design pass on that drag and drop uh, but it is a completely different drag and drop uh, piece of code they're actually totally different code paths um, the IPE is actually using jQuery but the back end one predates the jQuery UI stuff back there How about you come up to the microphone, because I can't hear you. And in fact, if anyone else has a question, you might as well just line up, that'll be quicker. Is the uh, panels locker that you were talking about earlier yeah. respected in the in-place editor, and when does that happen? Um, the, the, the panels lock is uh, respected by the in-place editor, and it happens as soon as you click either of these two buttons, uh, and then you have a lock on that. And that lock is removed as soon as you either save or cancel or leave the page. I mean, uh, I'm talking about the pane in a particular region you were talking about earlier in the talk. Yeah. Oh, oh, locking a pane into a region. That's a different lock. Um, th that was a control lock. If you want to see about locking a pane, I'll have to go to the back end editor for that, um, which I can do pretty easily. Um, that happens as part of configuring the pane. Oh, internet. There we go. Content. <coughs> this went so much faster when I was going through it at the apartment. Uh, I was not told that there was a presenter Wi-Fi at Ord, and I don't have any credentials for it, so at the moment, no. Uh, and, the, and then, uh, locking. So right there it says there's no lock, and I hit change. And then I get the lock configure form eventually. Where is it? There it is. And I can say immovable, and that means no one will be able to move it. Or I can say two regions, and I can select which regions it can be in. You'll notice that the region it is currently in is required. I can't lock it out of a region it actually is already in although it is possible to confuse it and move it where the back end doesn't know it's been moved. Um, I'm just going to hope people won't do that because there's no fix for that. Um, I mean, it, it's the front end doesn't tell the back end when things have been moved, where things have been moved until it's saved, so it would be very hard to fix. But that pane, as you can see, has a slightly different color, and when I hover over it, can't be moved at all here, and when I go back to, let's save that, or it won't happen. Save or it didn't happen. Yeah, there's a specific permission for locking. Uh, it's a single permission. You can either have the ability to lock or not. Um, the nice thing about that is, is that most content people uh, even if you give them the permission to unlock things, they're smart enough to know that if it's locked, somebody wanted it that way, and they shouldn't mess with it unless they've been told they can. Um, so even if you give them that permission, usually you can trust your content people, uh, if you couldn't trust your content people, to not mess up the site intentionally. I mean, you can't trust them not to mess it up accidentally, but that's the whole point of the locks is so they know. And now when I hit the IPE, it, it's respected in both. It can't be moved here either. See, I don't, uh, I don't have the drag and drop icon at all. If it was, one. if it was locked to that region, though, you'd have it. If it was yeah. locked to the region, I would have it. And when I tried to drag it to another region, the landing zone simply wouldn't show up. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, ho hold on. We got a, we got a queue. Hello. As part of our development practices, we uh, tend to feature up panels for progression to a live environment. A little closer to the microphone, oh, I can't quite hear you. Hello, test? That's okay. better. As part of our development practices, we tend to feature up a lot of our panels for progression to the live environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd also like to give this ability to our content editors. Can you think of a decent process flow such that it doesn't become overridden on live, which prevents largely our ability to make changes and push them up? Um, at iVillage, what they're using is they're using deploy module. Um, so their content people only go to a staging site. They make all their changes and then they use deploy to set up a, I want to deploy this content and then it happens as part of a package. Uh, I haven't been 
uh, too personally involved with the deploy setup, but a lot of work was done by my uh, uh, com compatriots at IO1 to make that work. Okay, um, thank you. That's a good thing to look into. Thanks. And everything that I've written here, like field, fieldable panel panes, they were meant to work with deploy. And one little thing about fieldable panel panes is they actually support UUID silently. So if you have UUID module on, mm -hmm. they will completely try to use that behind the scenes rather than their own internal IDs. Hi. Hello. Um, so you've added this CSS feature, which is awesome. Um, but what I'm wondering is performance-wise, did you, do you already, do you add your CSS to the cache that's inside of Drupal, or is it imported live and dynamically added to the page? It's a, it's like performance-wise, is it still more efficient to export everything out into your theme style sheet? Um, which CSS are you talking about? Because we haven't. Um, like C CSS inside of uh, Pane, like you, you know, you can stylize. Oh yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Okay, so um, the internal CSS tool, when you do that, it will store that CSS uh, partly in the database, but more importantly, in the file system. Uh, this works almost exactly the way aggregation works. Um, so that CSS file then looks like uh, sites, all files, uh, public, uh, C tools, CSS, bleh, dot CSS. <laughs> Um, then that can be aggregated with normal CSS. Um, so it will be no less efficient uh, than any other CSS. Beautiful, thank you. You're welcome. So back on the, on the. Wait, is this a trick question? No, it's okay. not. <laughs> it sort of is, but back on the pane locking. Yeah. Um, doesn't the ability to change layouts have significant effect there because if I were to change the layouts, then I would have the ability to move all the content in a region, and Wait. I don't have the ability to select, say, every region for every layout that's available when you that, lock it. That's true, okay. um, and that is a bit of an issue. Uh, you can only move the entire content of a region with that UI, so if there's three locked panes and two unlocked panes, you have to move those locked panes as a unit. Um, so you could theoretically move that entire system into a region that it's not supposed to be in. Uh, also, changing layout is a separate permission, and if you're heavily utilizing locks, you probably don't want them to change layouts. Okay, that was um, the follow-up question, so. And then the other aspect of that is if you do let them change layouts, you can give them a set of layouts that all have the same set of region IDs, uh, which means the locks will continue to work. So um, you have some flexibility there, but that is something to keep in mind. You could give yourself trouble uh, if you try to use that feature without thinking about the uh, aspect ramifications of layout change. All right, another question about locking. Um, currently, you don't have the, the ability to drag that block that right. we just locked. But I see that the garbage can is still there, so you can delete the block. Is there a way to turn that off? Um, that is a, a feature that will show up in the next version. Um, okay, that's, so that's something that we didn't think about, but yeah, uh, locking it from being deleted is something we need and will happen pretty soon. Uh, I'm pretty sure that'll show up within two weeks, in fact. All right, uh, that seems to be the questions for here. Let me, let me show you Panelizer. Uh, it's, it's hard to envision what Panelizer does, even when you see it. Um, I don't know if a 3G will be any faster, so, but thank you. But setting it up will probably take longer. Um, so, <laughs> thanks for the tweets. <laughs> My phone buzzes every time you mention me. <laughs> so I know I'm doing something right when my phone keeps buzzing, or maybe wrong, it could go the other way. Uh, what stupid thing is he saying? So Panelizer, and I don't know why, but Panelizer has its uh, uh, admin UI over under configuration when every other panel's thing is under site building. Um, I don't know how it got there. Uh, maybe Damien put it there, actually. <laughs> I can't remember, because I know Damien uh, helped a lot with the D6 to D7 uh, conversion, and I think that's when it ended up here. Uh, and now it's too annoying to move. Um, so at some point I may move it, I don't know. I hate moving things once they're in place just because even if it makes more sense that it's in another place, everyone h is used to it in one place, and they go, where'd it go? So I don't know. It, Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, so as you can see here, um, I've got a, a security update. Oh, um, didn't know that. I, I have the ability to control users by bundle. 
Uh, interestingly, there are no user bundles. In theory, it might even be possible to add user bundles, but I don't think so, um, because you can't change the bundle on an entity. Um, so you can't create a user with a bundle other than the default. But I don't know, maybe someday someone will address that. If they do, this will support it. Um, I can do taxonomy vocabularies, uh, which means, or sorry, I can do taxonomy terms and then the bundles are the vocabulary. Um, that means that when you want to have your uh, genre vocabulary look completely different from your tags vocabulary, uh, you can do that just by selecting one of these and controlling the default panel uh, or the choices. Um, one of the interesting things here is that if you have one term in your genre category that you want to look different from everything else, you can do that by giving that term its own panel, uh, which sounds like why would you want to do that? And I bet people who are dealing with, con with uh, media heavy sites uh, probably have use cases for that. Um, and then of course there's nodes. Um, so the options we have here are to panelize it or not. So if you don't panelize it, the node is ignored, the bundle's ignored. And then there's two little checkboxes that are provide panel and uh, allow panel choice. What provide default panel means is that all entities of that bundle type will automatically get that, the default panel layout regardless of settings on the node. Uh, and then everything is panelized. So if you want all nodes of type article to look with this layout, you would select that and give it a default layout. What panel choice means is that you can create a list of potential uh, layouts and those can be selected by a little select widget when editing or creating the node. If you give them a choice without a default, then they will only get a layout if selected. If you give them a choice with a default, all nodes that have never made a selection will get the default, but when editing or adding a node, you can pick a different one. Um, and then the list of choices looks an awful lot like the list of pages or any other things if you're familiar with the C-Tools export UI, because this is in fact using the C-Tools export UI. Um, and then we have all of these choices, um, which are editing the content, layout context, um, and a bunch of other things for each one of these. So if I go and add an article node, because I've got choice on that, when I get to the page, we're getting there, I will have a widget down here under panelizer where I get to say which one it is, and I never renamed the default one, but I could, or I can pick from the other ones that I set up. Uh, one important use case that I have seen for this one is I could do this on my users and allow my users to control which of the layouts I have provided for their uh, profile page. So if I wanna provide 10, boom, they select them and then they see what they look like. And because you can embed CSS directly into each of these, you could even go so far as to completely change the color scheme on their pages based on what you put in here. So uh, lots and lots of possibilities. And as I said earlier, every one of these actions, layout, context, settings, and all of that have permissions. I could have just permission to get to this and never be able to actually override it. Or I could give them permission to this and let them change the content so they could move stuff around. And if I did that, I could lock certain panes in and only allow them to move certain bits around. Lots and lots of choices. Um, and I can lock it down very well. That in a nutshell is Panelizer. Anyone have any questions about that one? If you do, just head up to the microphone. So this looks a lot like um, what's provided already in like uh, node overrides. Yes. Like for a node, I could say, I'm gonna have a node at node, node ID, and yep. then essentially do this through context or selection rules. That's correct. So. In fact, it uses that mechanism. So yeah, so is this a way of, if I went in through that door, 
would I see these configurations reflected or are these totally separate, but they do pretty much the same thing? What you will see What you will see in Page Manager, I assume you're talking about Page Manager with the variants, um, you will see that Panelizer has a variant right there. And that is how this actually works. And Panelizer will say, oh hey, I've got an entity. Is it panelized? I'm going to use that panel and exit out right there. Um, that actually means that you could put rules above this for some very specific things and abort even before it gets to Panelizer. You could also put some fallbacks so that if things have not been panelized, do it differently if I wanted to. Um, one use case for that might be because Panelizer requires you s to set it up differently for every bundle because we're trying to allow lots of options. If I have one that I want to work for six different bundles, I could put that here instead. Just, you know, different possibilities. Uh, but for a lot of use cases, you will stop using this and instead use Panelizer. Cool, and thanks for answering my dumb questions on IRC too. No problem. <laughs> I think we're running short on time. I'm ending in five minutes, right? I'll I'm, talk I, really quickly. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the reason the panelizer menu is under configuration is because in Drupal 6 it was under the settings. Is it so it was my fault? Okay. I don't yeah, remember. We can, I'll do a patch later. Um, <laughs> it turns out to be a complicated patch, just to warn you. There's a lot of paths. <laughs> yeah. Search replace. Um, so, uh, what are your thoughts on using Panelizer to have a default per role and then allowing users to change their layout by role rather than specifically just a, a catch-all? Because user roles don't fall into the bundle the, the structure. Did everyone hear that? It's a little quiet, but talking about using Panelizer to do defaults by role. The problem with that is that roles are not, I have a role, I have zero to many of the possible roles. Right. So you have to figure out how you handle conflicts. What if I go in and turn on every role in the system for this user? Which of the eight possible panels does it get? Right. So I guess it kind of would be better to fall back to setting up different rules through page manager? Uh, if you're doing it by role, yes. I think that's the way you have to do it. OK. And do any of uh, the scheduling modules work with Panelizer changes? The ERS module works with Panelizer perfectly well. Cool. However, uh, oh no, 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 it actually, and it even works with IPE, although, no, actually it works fine with IPE because what happens is the IPE will edit the draft. No, I'm sorry, it won't. It does not work with IPE. The problem, and the reason, I'm sorry, and the reason for that is IPE is looking at the, the published product. When you hit edit, you're supposed to edit the draft, but it could look completely different and it has no way to do that. Okay. Thank um, you. So, uh, I have one more minute. Any w last question? I missed a bunch of things I wanted to talk about, but I've got 15. Oh, good. I can talk about other stuff then. Thank you. Uh, my error. I, I only looked at when the session started. <laughs> um, in that case, uh, I should move on. I was, panelizers covered. Everyone understands that. All right. Good enough. All right, um, the fieldable panel panes module. Um, managing uh, fieldable panel panes is an awful lot like managing nodes um, in the, you get a list eventually. There it is. Oh, except I'm not gonna give you the list. I'm, we're going to the main panel UI here. Uh, but you get a list. Oh, man, I'm buzzing all over. <laughs> um, a list, uh, you get a list of all the, pa the panes you have with the ability to edit them. Uh, again, it looks a lot like the C-Tools export UI, although this one, in fact, is not because they're entities, and the C-Tools export UI does not actually work for entities. Um, so it is actually a view that lists them that's uh, hidden back in the system. I may have lost internet. Th these others weren't taking this long. Um, hmm? You're actually killing the internet with Twitter. I think you should give yourselves a hand for tweeting, tweeting that much. <laughs> um, uh, someone is killing the internet, though, so I guess I'm just going to have to talk about it for a minute. Um, but what you'll get is the list. 
and you'll be able to look at the fieldable panel panes and what they look like. You'll be able to edit them. Uh, there are tabs to control the access control. Uh, but most importantly, when you're editing a panel, when you click that add content thing, uh, you will get, um, usually it's on the left, but mm -hmm. if you select the bundles, you can control it. Oh, hey, I finally got a page. Um, I got the entities tab up here. So that's where it is. Um, you will get a little thing that says new panel pane where you'll be able to create it just for that pane, upload your files or whatever. Um, I keep saying upload files because that's the primary usage for it. It was the one thing that the custom content couldn't do. Um, but that may not be the only thing you do with it. Once you're using this, you may just use it a lot. Um, because it's an entity, you can't export it normally because entities and field API are really hard to export, but you can use deploy module. Um, so you do have ways of getting this from a staging site to a uh, uh, finish site. Um, so like with uh, nodes or users, you have managed fields and managed display. Um, now I only have one bundle here. One little caveat, I didn't add a UI for adding new bundles, but hook entity info alter can add bundles and the readme comes with an example. Oh, thank you. Uh, I guess I'm gonna switch my internet over. Maybe it'll be faster. I probably shouldn't, because then it will no longer be exhibitor internet, and then it will be just as slow as everything else. Let's see if this actually works. I'll try lowercase first. $99 for a day? Wow. Hey, that worked. All right. Let's come back over here. Oh, that was a lot faster. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Everyone give Michelle a hand for doing that for us. All right. Um, so like uh, uh, I was saying, there's the uh, Fields, I mean, you've used Field View API, I don't really need to show you this. Um, I've got fields on my bundle. Um, as I was saying, you can add fields through hook entity info alter. There's an example in the readme.txt that comes with uh, fieldable panel panes. And people who've used this have told me it takes five or 10 minutes and you hit load and there's your new bundles there. The only caveat is watch out for deleting bundles because if you delete a bundle mm -hmm. and there's content in that bundle, that content gets orphaned and there's not much you can do about it. So if you're going to remove a bundle, be sure you go through and remove all the content in that bundle. Um, and when you go through list, it's easy to find because you list it per bundle. Um, so at least you can find it quickly. Uh, and because this is a view, you could use VBO to create a view to allow you to mass delete stuff. Um, so uh, if you've never used VBO to create a view to mass delete stuff, put that into your toolbox because it's really handy. Um, and that's kind of fieldable panel panes. Let me uh, show you adding one. Um, unsurprisingly, it looks like adding a node. Um, we've got a title, we've got a body, and the other things we have are if I make it reusable, I've got category and administrative title for what it's going to show up as in the add content dialog. Go for it. Um, this is awesome, by the way. Uh, and it is really easy to write a, a new bundle. I did it during Earl's class on Monday. It takes five minutes. Uh, I'm curious about managing the content of the entities, mm -hmm. and I, I have this same issue right now with custom C tools content. Right. Um, users are going to the content tab to manage content. Yes. What's the reasoning for not kind of including those things in that area? Um, because the manage content tab actually means manage nodes, and we have we have uh, erred in my opinion, in renaming nodes to content, at the same time as adding entities, which are other types of content that are not content. Yeah, because, well, like, uh, if you go to, um, you know, admin content, you have um, content, which is the nodes, but you can also see comments as a tab, and now media module oh, puts, sure. puts a media tab there. Any um, reason we couldn't get things like fieldable panel paint? There's no reason we couldn't, to be honest. I'm simply never thought about it. Okay. 
So uh, there would be no real reason not to do that. Honestly, it would probably just be a view. Yeah. So um, people who are interested in this maybe create oh, a view wow. and submit it. Yeah. Submit a patch. Cool. <laughs> I'll work on it. Can we see what the UI looks like when you're adding a field little panel pane to yep. an actual panel? That is actually where I was going. Awesome. Thank you. So, well, you can ask while I'm doing that. Okay. Um, I would be interested in whether these fieldable panel panes are translatable, for example, with entity translation? Yep, they're entities, so they should be translatable okay. just like every other entity. Okay. Um, I don't know a lot about translation, so mm -hmm. I don't know the ins and outs of it, okay. but any entity should be translated about the same way, I think. Okay, I'll try it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so over here on the left, I've got my panels pane. That is created by the bundle. Um, in the code, I can control what category that appears in. This appears top level um, because there's a flag that says so, but I can actually put it in a category so I don't have to have all of them there, although that's a really convenient place for it. And now I'm in the, the uh, overlay or the modal with the very same UI we just saw a little bit ago, um, except by default, earlier you saw that this make this entity reusable was checked. Here, it is not checked, but if I check it, then I get to choose a category and it will show up later. Um, that does mean that if I have one that's in a panel that was not reusable, if I can find it, which managing content, it can be tricky, uh, I can go back and make it reusable if I wish. How about WYSIWYG integration? Um, well, it, it is uh, integrated with WYSIWYG as well as anything in the modal is integrated with WYSIWYG. That's something I still have to look into. Um, WYSIWYG, last I checked, had still had issues with la lazy loading its JavaScript. That is no longer as much my problem as it is WYSIWYG's, but I'm probably going to be looking into it anyway because my clients are starting to want that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to have a different piece of content. Cancel. By the way, most people may not know this. Oh God, I hate that. But cancel now actually takes you back to the page, it didn't used to, it used to close the dialogue. Just one of those little new things. Um, and I wanted node, I wanna add a field for this node. That'll do. So, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, that's, that's a bug that I've seen. It'll be fixed in the next version. It's just a notice, so it doesn't hurt anything. Um, so when adding fields, um, you get default uh, formatters. Uh, there's a patch to make this Ajaxy. It's not in yet, but it probably will be eventually. Um, so right now it's actually a two-page system. So that formatter had no settings, so we just get a blank page. And Pearl. then I've got, where did I add that pane? Where did I add that pane? Let's do that again. I wanted it over here. Good thing we have faster internet. Ooh. Yeah, that's weird. I haven't seen that happen before. Maybe I did something wrong. Or maybe there's a bug because that would never happen. Let's try that again. Never, never, ever have bugs. Like I said, I just released this a couple days ago. It would be weird if there were bugs. <laughs> there weren't fresh new bugs. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Yeah, that original panel pane entity, would yeah. that also be like an entity info alter situation if I didn't like the name of that yep. for some reason? You can change it, remove it. Um, again, if you remove it, make sure it has no content associated with it first. But other mm -hmm. than that, once you've done that, remove it, it's safe. So it awesome. doesn't need to be there. What did I do? There's something weird going on there. Do it from back here. It's a bug that I could swear I fixed, but I'll look into that when I get back. Oh, no, it's there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Let's refresh. Um, so it should still show it. I don't know why it's not, but at least it did add it. Yeah, there's supposed to be a placeholder. It's possible the redesign broke the placeholder. Um, that, you know, never happens. Because um, I didn't look at the placeholder when we did the redesign. Um, and I don't think I had any empty panes. So I guess what I really need to do is edit the node and add a body. Oh, no, there is a body. It's just not rendering. That's going to make it really hard to show you this. Well, I got uh, an image field. Oh, no. No, er. I'm on a weird node type, too. New comments. Uh, no, that's just the whole node. Yeah, hold on. I got another one. could also be confused by uh, um, ERS stuff as well. That one has a body. I don't think this one's panelized. So I can show you, if you have a node that has never been panelized and has no default, that's how you panelize it. You get a little button that sounds kind of cool, and then suddenly you have all this. Uh, and it gets a pretty lame default, but that's okay. One more time, and I'm running out of time again. Go ahead and ask your question while I uh, fight with this. Uh, just thank you. <laughs> oh, well. And. Okay. So. Save. body with the body. I'll scroll down after the refresh. One minute, one minute. Oh, am I going to make it? There's my body field. And then I hover over and I've got edit field. And in the overlay, so this one actually kind of requires overlay module to work because that seemed like the best way to do it. Um, I now have the edit for just that field and nothing else other than revisions which are not supported on this note type. Um, and as I said, this form is accessible through other means that don't need panels, so you could use this and just reuse it in ways that work for you. Yes, sir? Yeah. ERS doesn't seem to be available. Is that for a reason, or? It should be available. Drupal.org slash project slash ERS. Uh, no downloadable, so. Hold on. Project ERS. I don't think it has an official release yet. You still have to use the, uh, yeah, okay, you have to go to view all releases. Sorry, it's still technically experimental because it's so crazy. Uh, I haven't done an official release for it, so you have to get it out of Git. Um, so if you're not comfortable getting modules out of Git, you're gonna have to wait a bit. Uh, I don't wanna do a release until Henrique's patch to do unpublishing is in because it doesn't feel right without that. All right, I have half a minute left. Any other questions? All right, thank you all for attending. Have a great DrupalCon, fill out surveys.